It's October. Welcome to the Teens Cornerstone Connection lesson. This month, we begin a new quarter with the theme, Reality Bible. We have our, um, we have Shani on the mission story, Amy and Sid on violin and piano, Joyce um, appealing to the deaf community. We have Seth, Misati, and Silas with our wonderful teen teachers as our panelists. Enjoy. Uh, hi, my name is Shani, and I'm going to be reading the mission story today. So the mission story comes from Cameroon, and it's about a young boy named David. And the title of our story is Breaking Bread. By 6 o'clock in the morning, little David was dressed and ready to leave home for kindergarten. Mother handed over his backpack stuffed with textbooks, paper, pencils, and most importantly, breakfast. Breakfast was a delicious, chewy chunk of bread. Kindergarten started at 7 o'clock. After a few sessions, it was time for breakfast. David eagerly pulled out the bread from his backpack. He was hungry. As he prepared to eat, a little boy sitting beside him spoke up. Could you share with me? He asked. David saw the boy didn't have any bread. His mother hadn't packed breakfast for him, so David tore a piece off the bread. Here you are, he said. As the boy accepted the bread, another boy came over. Could you share with me? He asked. David saw that this boy also didn't have bread. His mother didn't pack for him breakfast. David tore off another piece of bread. Here you are, he said. Then a third boy came over. David had already guessed why he wa what he wanted. He saw that the boy didn't have any breakfast and must be hungry. Sure enough, the boy had a question. Could you share with me? He asked. David didn't have much bread left. He wondered what to do. But then he remembered the Bible story. In the story, God's prophet Elijah was hungry and he went to a poor mother for help. He asked the mother, could you share with me? However, there was a famine in the land and the mother only had enough flour and oil to bake one last loaf of bread. She had planned to eat the bread with her son, but she shared it with Elijah. God rewarded her with a miracle. He provided her an unending supply of flour and oil and the mother was able to break bread until the famine ended. She and her son never went hungry. David had had the Bible story in Sabbath school. The Sabbath school teacher had told the children, you need to share with those who are hungry. David broke the last piece of bread in half. and The three boys nibbled on the delicious chewy bread. It was a good breakfast. David felt good that he had been able to help the other boys. His own breakfast wasn't big, but he didn't get hungry before kindergarten ended he went home for lunch. The next day, the same thing happened again. When David pulled out his bread for breakfast, the other boys asked him to share. David shared again, and he felt good. After that, children asked David to share his breakfast every day. Many things changed when David finished kindergarten and started first grade. School started at 11 o'clock, so he ate breakfast at home. But now he ate lunch at school. Mother had no longer packed bread for him. Instead, she gave him lunch money to buy bread to eat. But one thing didn't change. Children kept asking David to share his food, and he kept sharing. Today, David is 13 years old, and he shared his food for eight years. His kindness was surprised by some classmates, and they asked, Why are you sharing? David likes to tell them the story of how Jesus shared food with a crowd of 5,000, or how Jesus shared everything with his disciples. I want to share like Jesus, David says. So David's generosity had a good influence on his classmates. When they saw him share food, they also started sharing their food with those who had none. David said he's happy that he can share. Sometimes I feel hungry because I give away so much food, he says. But I'm happy because I can follow Jesus' example of sharing. I believe that I'm sharing the, right, the light of Jesus with my friends. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help open a Seventh-day Adventist school in David's home country of Cameroon, where children will be able to learn about the joy of sharing God's blessings with others. Thank you for your generous offering.
Hello everybody, welcome, Karibu Sana, to our Cornerstone lesson this week. Uh, we have a wonderful lesson for you. But before we start, I'd just like my fellow panelists to introduce themselves, starting from my extreme right. Hello and happy Sabbath to us. Um, my name is Seth Ruben Mukaya, and I'm um, honored to be here. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's so good morning, afternoon, evening to our viewers. My name is Misati Nyambane, and I'd love for us to jump into this interesting lesson. Fantastic. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm Silas, and I'm happy to be here. Wonderful, and I'm happy to be here too. Our lesson this week is entitled Prayer Power. But before we start, let's say a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, O oh Lord God, we come before you, Father, this time. We'd like to thank you so much for another opportunity, Father, to gather together to learn from your feet. Now, Father, as we begin, I ask that you may be with us, keep us, and help us to understand that that we learn. In Jesus' name I pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful lesson for you today entitled Prayer Power. Prayer Power. And it's all about why we should pray, how we should pray, and should we pray in order for us to get results, right? And we'll be diving into that uh, straight away. And I just wanted to introduce uh, Silas over here with the what do you think section. Uh, just before we go into the story, just to uh, uh, give us some prelude uh, on, on what we are going to discuss. Silas? Okay, so I'll ask you one question before we go into the story. And mm. this is a question to everyone who is here. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been mocked for not having a certain thing? And we'll start with Misati. Yeah, so personally, like let's see what, what mockery. Okay, the mockery I've faced in my life was like in high school, I was being mocked, I was whispering, I was, oh yeah, do you have a girlfriend? I was like, mm -hmm. no, I've never had a girlfriend. And they're like, bro, are you gay? <laughs> I, are you sure you're not gay? And I was like, nah, I'm, I'm straight, man. Straight. Now, nah, don't you have a girlfriend? I was saying, it's a choice, you know? There's no pressure. This life, no pressure. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's true. Uh, this life, no pressure. Silas? Okay, so the second question is, God answers your prayers every single time, although sometimes not in the way you expected. Do you think this is true? Okay, so... For me, I think God knows what we need. God knows what we want. And he knows what is best for us. So whenever we ask for something, he answers in the right way. Maybe it's not what we really want, but that is what we are meant to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the story. And this story is about... Hannah, and this man from Ramathaim, he had two wives. One was called Hannah, and the other was called Penina. So one of them had no children, and the other had children. So because of this, Penina used to mock Hannah every day because she didn't have children and Penina did. So that is one thing she had and Hannah didn't have. So that's what she always used, used to mock her with. And in this story, we see that Hannah decided to go to the temple and pray and ask God to give her a child. And she prayed every single day and one day, Eli, the priest of the temple, while he was in the temple, he asked her, are you, are you drunk? Or what's the problem with you? And he had not known her story, but from how she was praying and seeking God honestly, he thought she was drunk. But she was actually not drunk, but she was praying and asking God to grant her a petition. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Silas. I think there you've just taken us through very well, through the story and also through the what do you think section. Eh? And here it's uh, painting the picture of a, of a heartbroken woman, really, eh? 
who, you know, has been mocked. You know, she said that perhaps in the story, if you read it a little bit more, it says that, you know, she had the love of her husband, but then there was one thing that she didn't have, and that was a child, you know. And as a result, you know, her co-wife uh, uh, mocked her every single day without, without relenting, right? And this made her life a misery. She was absolutely miserable. And so she goes on and, and, and she, she, while at the temple, uh, during the yearly feast, she, she comes up and, and, and prays to the God, prays to God, you know, uh, yearning, yearning for, for, for a child. So much so that even when Ellie the priest sees her, uh, who we learned about last week and his bad boys, uh, you know, he's convinced is convinced that this woman over here is drunk. This woman over here is certainly not in her right mind. Just look at her, you know. And uh, uh, I just know, so that's where we are in the story. And I just wanted to invite uh, Seth with the key text. After that prayer, what happens? After that prayer, what happens? Okay, so um, our key text comes from the book of um, Second Samuel, chapter first. Oh, wait, wait. So first Samuel chapter 1, verse 20, and it says, And Samuel spoke unto all the house of Israel, saying, If, you, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts... And yes, I think you're reading, I think that's Second Samuel. That's yeah. first, first, first Samuel. Samuel, chapter yeah. 1, verse 20. Verse 20. Verse 20. Um, let, me... let me jump in. Because I find that this verse yeah. is particularly fascinating mm -hmm. to me. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So you can see that after all that prayer, you know, at the end of, at the end of that prayer, while Ellie is watching her, uh, he says, go on, your prayer has been answered. You know, and we can see now the results. Just after that prayer, you know, he says that uh, in the course of time, God came through. God came through, right? Yeah. Um, which is miraculous. I don't know. You know, just by praying. Yeah? And, and Hannah certainly recognizes it. You see, even by the name that she gives him, as you rightly put it, huh? he said, because I asked the Lord for him. And God came through and he was able to have uh, uh, a child, right? But now we want to look at some of the most salient points, eh? particularly uh, looking at, at, at what the spirit of prophecy says. Eh? Uh, and I'd just like to invite Misati here to read the, the flashlight uh, as, we, as we go back to, to, to um, Seth there later on with the punchlines. Misati, just go right ahead. So Hannah's prayer was granted. She received the gift for which she had so earnestly entreated. As she looked upon the child, she called him Samuel, mm -hmm. asked of God. Mm -hmm. As soon as the little one was old enough to be separated from his mother, she fulfilled her vow. Mm -hmm. She loved her child with all the devotion of a mother's heart, mm -hmm. but she had received him as a treasure consecrated to God, and she would not withhold him from the, from the giver, his own. Now, I'd look at the first part of that flashlight where she gets her prayer answered. Mm -hmm. And I think often we may view prayer in the wrong perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, Hannah is told... Go, your prayer has been answered. Mm -hmm. But now it's not that, you know, the thing is, she doesn't just get pregnant just like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because our prayers are not answered just like that. I mean, so she just realizes, ah, yes, my prayer has been answered, so I'll now miraculously get pregnant like Mary. Like, no. Mm -hmm. Hers wasn't like Mary. What we are told is that human effort had to match divine intervention. In that, by having faith that she's like, you know what, I'm fertile. So I'm fertile, so I'll go have sex with my husband and I'll get a child. And that is the faith that gave her a child. Mm -hmm. If she decided, you know what, my prayer has been answered. I mean, she now have gotten pregnant. She's not Mary. Mary was an exception yeah. to the rule. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Um, you know, you must back up prayer with action. And uh, we see Hannah did that. And she did it in faith. I'd like to say she did it in faith. She must have tried a hundred times before. But then she now did it with faith. Huh? Um, I, I, perhaps maybe could you read the did you know part? The did you know part, which summarizes really what we're trying to say in a very uh, concise manner. The did yes. you know part. The did you know, like did you know, mm -hmm. prayer is opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Mm -hmm. Not that it's necessary in order to make known to God what we are, but in order to enable us to receive him. Mm -hmm. Prayer does not bring God down to us, 
but brings us up to him mm-hmm. you know as in you know as in if we look at this perspective of opening up your heart as to a friend what do you tell your friend you tell your friend the ups the downs in graphic and horrifying mm-hmm. detail i mean mm-hmm. for real it's mm-hmm. like that's how you talk to your friend because you're like i trust you mm-hmm. so as in because you know god knows he already knows mm-hmm. but then he wants you to speak he wants you to be able to exercise that faith and that like you know what i want you god to connect with me i mean yeah. just think about it if you had a friend who knew everything about you could you say that you can connect with them yeah not exactly it just feels mystical yeah but then when you open up to someone yeah. when you're the one who divulges the information you invite the person into your life to see you personally mm-hmm. the way you really are indeed and even after the analogy that you've given is quite right you know even after you you talk to a friend you know and the friend gives you advice what do you do after you you go and act on it you know you go and now put 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 in place a plan of action for you to be able to carry it out not because you know you 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 have assurance that it's going to work but because really you believe you believe that you know this is the best solution right and that's what we see here and it's an important aspect of prayer that even after even after you have prayed then you must move in faith you know just like Hannah did um and so i just want to invite Seth uh with some of the punch lines just to look at other people who prayed and put it into action you know people who prayed and actually followed up uh Seth if you can read for us the first verse Genesis chapter 20 verse 17 eh? okay um mm. Genesis chapter 20 verse um 17 it says to God and to God healed Abimelech his wife and his female slaves so that so they could have children again precisely and this is talking about the the time when Abraham prayed to God remember uh, Abraham had unfortunately lied that Sarah was uh, his sister right and now he prays to God and God comes through once again uh Elias, if you can be sorry uh, Silas if you can read uh, the book of 1 Samuel chapter 7 and 20 verse 27 1 Samuel 2 7 mm. uh, 1 Samuel chapter 7 second Samuel chapter 7 verse 27 okay it says Lord almighty God of Israel you have revealed this to your servant saying I will build a house for you so your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you Yeah, precisely. And this verse is very good. This is almost showing us that we should not be afraid to pray, you know. You look at uh, uh the last part of that verse it says, "So your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you." You know, a lot of the times when we are feeling disheartened, a lot of the times when we don't know where to go to, it's even hard to talk to somebody, you know, because you might feel perhaps they might judge me, perhaps they will not understand how I how I feel, where I'm coming from. Perhaps maybe you're even in the wrong and you're afraid that there might be consequences. Uh if you divulge this information. But we are being told that it is not that way with God. Huh? With God you can find courage, you can take uh 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 solitude, you can take solace in confiding in him. Um Mr. if you can read for us uh Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Don't be anxious for anything, mm. but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving mm-hmm. present your requests to God. Uh-huh. That's that's that you know, don't be anxious for anything. And here the Bible is trying to tell us, you know, do not worry. Do not worry about anything, you know. Um uh Misati perhaps maybe just as you read that verse, I don't know how would you relate that uh verse to the story of Hannah? You know, or you know, to the story of Hannah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. yeah. Go ahead. I I see it is like Hannah at first was anxious for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Because what would happen as Hannah was the first wife. Mm-hmm. Typically. Mm-hmm. Because if Penina got kids then then why would like Elkanah need a backup? Like, yeah. Okay and so Penina was the backup. Yeah. So she was sort of like the subordinate to Hannah. Mm-hmm. Then Hannah could not get kids but then now the society required kids for the legacy to be continued. So Hannah has no children. Penina enters the story has a child. Has a second child. Has some more children. And Hannah is like god. God when will my time come? So she was very anxious. The point she now goes to God. I think that was she goes to God and says God you must 
give me a child. I think similar to the way Jacob was wrestling with God, we could just see the way that for her it was in her spirit, she was like, God, you must. Mm. You must. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, it's like similar to when you see people speaking in tongues, they're like, Ashta, Pashto, Ashta. And I think they're just going on and mm-hmm. on and on and mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, yes. Hannah was anxious. She was anxious. She was anxious. anxious. And, and, you know, that's probably why, perhaps even Ellie, as you rightfully put it, you know, that's why Ellie even thought that she was drunk. Yeah, uh, uh, when he found her in the temple praying, you know, because she 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 had left everything uh, uh, to God. Um, perhaps I can just bring in the panel a little bit, uh, uh, Silas. Uh, why do you think uh, Hannah wanted a baby so much? You know why? You know, as in she, you know, when 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 she talks to her husband, her husband says, you know, am I not what like more than, more, ten, more sons? than ten sons to you? You know, but why do you think? Just put yourself in her shoes now. Why do you think she wanted a baby so much? Yeah. Okay. Perhaps I think just to just to to stop to st- be able to stop Penina from mocking her and also feeling the mm. the goodness of. Having your own children. No, having and your own I'd children. like to yeah. jump in right there. Because, like, you know, I find it fascinating that often we feel that God is too big, too mighty to care for our whims and our desires. Mm-hmm. For real, like, God answered Hannah's whim. It was like, God, she's mocking me. Please, I don't want to be mocked. Just please. I mean, the, the child is yours. Mm-hmm. Okay, it feels a bit sad mm-hmm. for Samuel to have been chucked to the priest without his consent. Mm-hmm. But that's, a, that's another matter. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, like God answered her whim. God answered her, like, these, these petty, petty things. It's like, God, uh, God, I just want this. As in for God, just, just kidogo, just a little, just a little, so I can feel that, ah, yes, I had a child. Mm-hmm. Just as in, that's a whim. That's something petty. Yeah. But God answered it. God cared for yeah. Hannah's pettiness, so yeah. to speak. yeah. He was, he was right there in the midst of it. He knew exactly how she felt, right? Um, that's a very good one. Uh, Seth, uh, just to, uh, coming back to the punchlines, uh, please read for us from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 31. Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 31. Um, okay. Um, Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 31. It says, Do you, mercy, do, you did not put an end to the unborn unborn boredom them and and or abandon them for you are glorious and merciful god merciful god yeah thank um, you for me yeah um what this verse is trying to say remember um back in those days hannah really wanted samuel to come to his to her life mm-hmm. because um, I remember that scenario whereby a mother is consistent of having a child mm-hmm. and remember God said bring bring your children back to me and it really touched me when I heard that Hannah in the end decided to like um, give Samuel to Ellie. And yeah. then um, Ellie was kind enough to take Samuel, Samuel as his own son because Hannah said, specifically said that he, if you give me a child, I will, I will bring the child back to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for that. Eh? And I think you've read the, the verse very well that says, uh, you know, but in your great mercy, you did not put an end to them or abandon them. For you are a gracious and merciful God, you know. And I just wanted us to bring out, maybe just to tie up the loose ends, um, you know, in what way, and this is really to everyone, eh? in what way uh, does this story for Hannah demonstrate uh, Christ's grace? You know, his grace to us, you know. We see that, you know, in the power of prayer, you know, how, how does the power of prayer demonstrate uh, uh, Christ's grace to us? This is really for anyone. Anyone can answer this. Um, go right ahead, Silas. I think you, you want to say something. Okay, I think 
This shows, this story shows that anything we ask from God is not too small or too big to be answered by Him. Yeah. It's, yeah. Perhaps it kind of says that as long as you ask, He'll give you, and as long as it's at the right time, yeah. He'll give it to you. Yeah. One question that I had was that. Did Hannah deserve a child, or was it uh, merely by God's grace that she got one? I think um, Hannah really deserved that child. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Hannah used to mock him, mock her. Penina. Yeah, Penina used to mock her. Penina used to mock her. Yeah. So in any, any time that Penina comes around Hannah, he, she says that, Oh, you don't have a child. Why do you need a child that badly? Yeah. And remember what I said before, that Hannah eventually decided to take Samuel to the temple. And he was, at that time, he was staying with priest Eli. And God called him in a very, with a very, at a very young age. And... I think it is amazing that God really cares about us and he eventually answered Hannah's prayer and Hannah fulfilled her promise to take back Samuel to the temple. Yeah, yeah. thank you for that. Uh, what do you guys think? I, I'll just stay on this a little while and then we'll move on to, to, to what you're bringing up, Seth. Eh? What do you think? Do you think that, that Hannah deserved that child or was it grace Akin, it? the thing would be like what is grace grace is unmerited favor mm -hmm. that's, that's how i see grace i think that's how mm -hmm. the bible defines grace like mm -hmm. to quote it in verbatim now the thing is like as human beings we're like what do i deserve i deserve to be punished i deserve to die mm -hmm. as in i don't deserve an abundant life because an abundant life comes to those who live holy and consecrated lives, those who have no sin in mm -hmm. them. The wages of sin is death. Uh -huh. But the thing is here, I'm like, how do I see Christ's grace? And I think when we look at grace, the words unmerited favor are inadequate mm -hmm. to quantify. And that, that satisfies like your, your longing for grace on a spiritual plane. Yeah. But you know what? We live in the flesh day, every, day by day. You yes. know, we, we live in the flesh. Oh, so the question is, how do I see Christ's grace in the flesh? And I think Hannah saw Christ's grace in the flesh. Yeah. Because from the fruit of her womb, yeah. she got her joy. Indeed. And I think it's the same way. Like, Hannah was what? She was direct. And I find this translation, I reading, I'm reading from Luke 11, mm -hmm. verse 10. Mm -hmm. I find this translation direct. Mm -hmm. Don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse. Hide and seek game we are in. That is, and that's the thing. Like, be direct with God. Speak to God and be like, don't be double-minded. Because you're like, God, I want this. God, I don't want it. God, could it be like, as in, it's like, God, this is what I desire. Hannah was clear. I desire a son. She wasn't I desire a daughter. She was clear. She was specific. I want a son. Give me a son. And that's what she got. She was direct. Yeah, she was direct. And that's a very good point that you bring. Eh? Grace is really unmerited favor. And I think that you, if you look at the story, even Hannah herself saw that this was actually a gift from God. You know, she had been trying it her own way. She had been trying it her own way for such a long time. And uh, to jump right in, yeah. that reminds me of Rachel. Yeah. The story of Rachel and Leah. Because I think Rachel tried it her own way so hard. She tried it her own way. So hard. And I mean, and it was so hard to the point yeah. that one of Leah's children came with the mandrake. The yeah. mandrake is, a, is sort of like an aphrodisiac yeah. of, that they used in that time. So then Rachel was like, you know what? Give me the aphrodisiac. Then I'll give you my turn to have sex with Jacob. She was, she was so dedicated, she was like, I want it. it, 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 it As in, I am yeah. going to do it my own way. I must. Yeah. I mean, so that's the thing. So she was trying it her own way. Like yeah. the same thing with Hannah. Yeah, it's, it's impeccable. You know, we do it all the time. In, and we have to remember, children, we don't deserve children. Children are a gift from God. Right. You look at even Abraham and Sarah, you know, trying to get the promised son. They did it their own way where they got Hagar 
to come and try and get a child, you know. So she recognizes, implicitly, whether you like it or not, she recognizes that, you know, children are a gift from God. I don't really deserve a child. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. I don't know we have done what with, with Elkanah, but we can't get one. So she went there and prayed to the only source that she, that she knows, and God grants her prayer. And she granted so much that now we move on to what you were saying, um, which is really the Friday part. And I'd like to ask uh, 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 if, you have, if you have your Bible, if you can read for us from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Um, and, it's, and the question lurks, you know, if you want something so bad, you have prayed for it so bad, God has finally granted it to you. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. You've granted uh, it. God has finally given it to you. And then he asks you to give it back to him. That sounds, that sounds tough. Okay. Ephesians, you know? um, yeah. Ephesians 6, 6, 6 18. Mm-hmm. It says, pray always with all your heart. Pray always with all and pray, pray with all. Huh? Praying mm-hmm. always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Yeah, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. This is an admonition that we're given at the end of the book of Ephesians by Paul. eh? And he's telling us really to pray, you know, to, 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 to supplicate ourselves, you know, and really just put ourselves in the shoes of one who is really in need. Huh? And, that's the, and that's where Hannah was. But now I want to ask our panelists and just uh, seek some opinion. Eh? When you're praying like that, what sort of attitude do you have to have to finally receive that thing and then give it out? You know, you've prayed like Hannah. People have thought you're drunk. What sort of attitude do you think Hannah had to, you know, pray in such a manner and then still give it out. I think the way I'd look at it is mm-hmm. that Hannah viewed having a child as the process rather than the destination. Uh-huh. That is. So having the child was a process. See, the, the, that pregnancy period, yeah. the breastfeeding period, for her she saw it as a process. So it's like the same way Job said, the Lord who has given has taken. Mm-hmm. Naked came I from my mother's womb, mm-hmm. and naked shall I return. Wow. And I think that's how Hannah approached it. She was like, you know what? God desires to give me an abundant life. Mm-hmm. And whatever he asks of me will always be either a pathway to an abundant life, mm-hmm. or it will be a mm-hmm. milestone mm-hmm. in my abundant life. Wow. Wow. I think she realized, because for her, mm-hmm. the thing that became fascinating that she had many other sons after and daughters uh-huh. that's it yeah no it's true it's true um so essentially what i hear you saying is that she had an attitude of trust yes. she trusted yeah. that you know god had the power even not only to give her one child but even to give her more you know and and, and that's the sort of attitude that we should have even when we pray you know we should have an attitude of trust an attitude where we are able to despite all evidence to the contrary. You know, fine, I've not had a child for long. I've just had one, G.O.D. Please, at least give me two. <laughs> yeah. You know, but she, she trusts in the abundance of God, you know. She trusts that God has the power even to give me more, you know. And, uh, and it's incredible. I just wanted us to read the further insight. Miss Ati, perhaps you can read for us uh, the further insight uh, just on, 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 on how we should pray and the sort of attitude we should have in response to that. Okay, I think the attitude we should have ah. while praying is yeah. humility, knowing your place in front of God and uh-huh. knowing why you're praying and why you really need what you're asking for before you actually go to God and ask Him for it. Okay, okay. No, thank you for that addition, and that's totally true. Uh, go ahead with the Father Insight. Our Father Insight speaks to us that our prayers are not to be a selfish asking, merely for our own benefit, We are to ask that we may give. Mm -hmm. And we are to look upon every duty, however humble, as sacred because it is a part of God's service. Our daily prayer should be, Lord, help me to do my best. Teach me how to do better work. 
give me energy and cheerfulness. Help me to bring into my service the loving ministry of the Savior. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. I like, I like the first quote that you read, and that quote comes from uh, Christ Object Lessons, page uh, 142, and it says, you know, our prayers are not to be a selfish asking, merely for our own benefit. We are to ask that we may give, you know, and that really encapsulates the whole uh, uh, story of Hannah, you know. She asked for that child, you know, she asked for that child and was ready to give it back, you know, to give back the child back to the service of God. You know, and uh, we know the story of Samuel. He later turns on to be a great judge in Israel, you know. Mm -hmm. And so just from that one selfless act, I'd call it selfless, wouldn't you? I think that it was very selfless on her part. She could have hung on to that child, but she gave out willingly. I don't know if we have anything to say that before we comment on the second one. Um, I think um, that wasn't like um, that selfish, but Mm -hmm. remember... Hannah really wanted to give the child back to God. Mm -hmm. And she prayed without ceasing. And, you know, if you pray consistently, you have, first of all, you have to think on what you want to pray for. Like, let me take as an example, um, if someone wants to pray to get a financial increase of whatever... Uh, business they are doing in uh, today's life. Maybe you, if you want to open your own business and you don't have the financial, uh, the financial help that you need, and you have to like think first before you actually go to the action. Yeah. Okay, no, I think you bring an important point. Eh? Whenever we pray, we must, we must ask, what is the end result? When, what is the end result of what I get? Eh? What, you know, is it going to be a benefit to other people? You know, what, 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 what's in it for others? You know, it's not all about you, it's not all about me. All right? The second part is really a part that, you know, admonishes us to do our best in whatever we do. I like the last part particularly that you read, me, Sati, that says, you know, uh, our daily prayer, our daily prayer should be, Lord, help me to do my best. Teach me how to do better work. Give me energy and cheerfulness. Help me to bring into my service the loving ministry of the Savior. Right? And this should be your daily, your daily prayer, really. Um, yeah. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the lesson, but it's a wonderful lesson. I just want to give uh, the panelists uh, perhaps two minutes each, two minutes each, or uh, just to, to tell us really what is their parting shot. What do you think that one should learn from this lesson? What did you learn from this lesson? And what, what do you think is pertinent for us as we read this lesson? I will start at the very end there with uh, Seth. Um, to me, I learned that um, whenever you pray, you have to think fast before you actually pray for the thing and I've learned a a very valuable lesson from the story of Hannah Mm -hmm. is that um, God said bring your children come bring your children back to me and it really helps us in that uh, suspect that we at times do something bad out here like for example taking alcohol and such stuff and it's harmful to our bodies and I think we should not um, uh, follow the advice that we have from our friends yeah okay thank you so much Seth right, so as I read this lesson and I looked at the title prayer power mm-hmm. so of course the title isn't a question it's a statement mm-hmm. we are declaring that prayer has power now the question is how and then the answer I found to that question is we may often, we often look at power as some mystical power, as some mystical entity, when in reality, the more accurate view of prayer is what new age people call manifestation. Mm-hmm. Other people are like, I am going to meditate, clear your mind, that sort of thing. Like what prayer does at first, prayer becomes a sort of meditation where it allows you to see things 
from a higher perspective. It allows you to look beyond your current issues and connect with a power greater than yourself. Mm -hmm. A power mm -hmm. that is above and beyond your problems. And in that moment, you have an objective view of your problems. I think there are people who are like, it just came to me. I was praying and the answer came to me and the idea came to me and I had a voice. I think the same thing with Elijah, like he had a still small voice. And then prayer is a sort of manifestation. Why would I say this? In manifestation prayer, like, you know, you need to allow the universe. When you align yourself with the universe. Okay, fine. But I think we look at the un I think we often shun what we do not understand as satanic. But if we look at what, what would this possibly mean? God has put in this world laws. He has put into this world dictates. And that is, if you throw yourself off of a high building, you're going to fall down and you're going to die. You're going to mm -hmm. break some bones. As in, gravity is real. So in the same way, God has put into place the law that whatever you pursue with your whole heart, that's what James calls a man who is not double-minded. When you pursue something with your whole heart, God is going to grant it to you, irregardless of who you are. Because it is his law, and his law is immutable and changeable and absolute. And that is why often there may be people who we may see that succeed. But then the reality is they don't see prayer as a mystical thing. They see it as a way of being real. Like Jacob. Mm -hmm. Jacob was real. He was like, you know what, I'm going to make sure that the only animals that mate are the animals that are mine. That is, I'm going to make sure that the children that are born are actually the speckled ones. And then afterwards, it's like, then the ones which are not speckled. So his prayer moved into the realm of practicality. He acted in faith. Mm. He acted. Thank you very much. That's very elaborate there. Uh, Silas. So as we finish, he just wants us to remember that when we are praying, we need to know what we are asking for, why, and how is it going to help us and help the people around us. Prayers should not be selfish, but for people, for us and for the people around us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our lesson. This lesson is a wonderful lesson. It has so much insight, so much insight, and it's very difficult for us to cover it within this short time. But we want to ask you to go and read it. Uh, my parting shot is, ladies and gentlemen, we have power in prayer. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard of something called uh, 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 an elevator pitch. You know an elevator pitch? You know? You want 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes with the most powerful CEO in the world. You meet them in an elevator. You want to put your pitch in fast, you know? We have the potential to reach the greatest CEO in the whole entire world. He runs the universe, the whole universe. And you have the power to reach him whenever you want, just by prayer, just by prayer. Hannah reached him, and by that she was able to conceive miraculously. She wasn't able to do it before. But through her prayer, she was able to conceive. You too, you too can have the same results. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to uh, invite one of us to pray as we conclude. Please pray for so us. Let's pray. Thank you, my Father, for the goodness that you've shown us. We thank you for the love that you bestow upon us. And we thank you for the amazing opportunity you grant us to live an abundant life. Mm -hmm. We thank you that you are almighty, all-powerful, and undeceiving and that in all things you desire our uttermost good, pleasure, and joy. Thank you, Lord, and please, Lord, be with us, guide us, keep us, direct us, and travel with us every single point, moment, step of the way. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Amen. 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 Thank you so much.